my good people. My name is Kevin Mwangi from Shujaki Nine Masters. We celebrate you, our heroes. Welcome to Shujaki Nine Masters. This is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary TV show internationally. Uh, Shujaki Nine Masters is in its fifth year of uh, keeping dogs. We started breeding like four years ago. We just had the first year was for selection of the best quality. We major in Belgian Malinois and Caucasian over Chakas, mainly known as the Russian Shepherds. Uh, <coughs> we are proud for having top quality breeds and uh, those are the only dog breeds that we have. Uh, for the Caucasians, we are into exotic breeds and uh, the size, the temperament, once you understand the breed, uh, for sure you'll uh, come to appreciate it. Uh, its, its temperament is very stable, uh, but always when you're getting the dog, you have to test and uh, understand what, what you're getting into, understand the breed from its <coughs> roots and uh, where it started from. For the Belgian Malinois, I think we all know its intelligence levels, the agility that they come with, and uh, everything good is found in the Belgian Malinois. 2023 was voted the most intelligent breed. Uh, its agility levels are on another level. Yeah, they can do a lot of work. They're naturally, they're working dogs. So we breed them, and uh, for all the clients that we sell the Belgian Malinois to, we take some time to advise them uh, because they are, their breed comes with its own challenges. Just a bit of challenges compared to the good things that it brings to your table. I've been a dog lover for, for almost all my life. Yeah, I started keeping dogs uh, a long time ago just to keep. Well, I, didn't, I only kept the local breeds, but with time, I, as I came to do my research and understand what I wanted, that's when I decided to produce quality dogs out here so that everyone can feel the excitement that the dog, dog, dogs bring to your life. We, as they say, dogs are not our whole lives, but they make our lives whole. So I wanted to spread the happiness to other people. So on the research, we're still doing our research on what new breeds to introduce into our kennels. Uh, what quality, what people, what the market wants, but we always focus on the providing quality and the intention, the intended use of the breed. We don't intend to breed, uh, to breed dogs that will be given the wrong priorities when they get to their homes. So we are working on bringing, but we, we have not finalized on our research. We are still also improving on the breeds that we have. So we are not really focusing on the new breeds. Our fo main focus currently is bringing different lines into our kennels for the breeds that we have, improving the quality, understanding the breeds more. And uh, we hope when the time is right, we'll introduce new breeds and uh, maybe a new breed, let's say, to be specific with time. All time will, is what we'll decide. Sorry, my viewers. Uh, we are in the rainy season and uh, during the rainy season comes the challenges of uh, flies but we, uh, we have put in missions to deal, to deal with them because the priority in our kennel is cleanliness. So first thing in the morning we do is clean the kennels, uh, give the dogs one at a time a, a play session outside the kennel. As we clean, uh, we have, as you can see, you will see later, our dogs don't sleep on bare floor. We have the pallets, wooden pallets, to improve the comfort. So we interchange, uh, we use different pallets. As we, we clean the kennel, we insert uh, different, different pallets into the kennel. Yeah, and then after cleaning, we prepare, we give them water. After the water, the do one, every dog, once its kennel is clean, you put water inside, the dog goes back in. That is the first step. Ensure that all the plates, all the bowls, every utensil meant for the dogs is cleaned up. Then from there, we go into some basic training session, play sessions, uh, socialization. We take the dogs out for walks. And uh, the, the day will show itself as it goes. But mainly we start with the cleanliness, 
Uh, we have a team of workers, so the one of the, as we are cleaning, the other one will be preparing the food for the dogs, uh, and especially the puppies, the morning feeding, second feeding, and the third feeding. So we have to wake up early and plan our day. Uh, for our dogs, we go for raw meat uh, from various uh, suppliers. We also do kibbles. We also do eggs. Uh, we give them lots of soup. We give them bones. Well, we call them meaty bones. We also get them chicken heads that is cooked. And uh, commonly, we, we, mostly we'll find rice mixed with the food. We also do multivitamins once in a while for the dogs. And uh, the deworming program is uh, up to date. That will matter. You, with, whether you're giving quality brands or quality food without proper deworming programs, then you'll be missing on the game point. <coughs> Since I started keeping the Caucasian over chakras, I haven't experienced a common disease. Uh, I think what I've heard from other people keeping the breed is the hip dysplasia maybe and uh, most of the people will overfeed the dog lack of exercise because of its big size people won't take the dogs for a long walk they, they are scared so because of the heat for the Caucasian of Achaka we give them the exercise is the one that we start with early in the morning before the sun is out they will go for their walks they'll have their play time we respect that uh, most uh, the origin of the breed is in the Caucasus Mountains, which is a very cold area. So when we bring them here, we also try to understand uh, the heavy coat. So we don't take them for walks during the sunny days. We'll do the walks and the and the play sessions very early in the morning and very late in the evenings. Uh, we give them the exercise. So we haven't heard of any common issue with their health. Very healthy dogs. Uh, as I say, all breeds, you just have to keep the <coughs> vaccinations up to date, uh, medical checkups. You can contact your vet once in a while to come and do a checkup for all your dogs. And uh, same to the Belgian Malinois, there are no challenges we can say are facing the specific breed. So they're excellent breeds for our dog lovers around. Yeah, so for our breeding programs, uh, yes, we have females and uh, we don't just breed the dogs. We select uh, the quality pair. We look into what, what do we want from the male and what do we, are we expecting the input of the female. And uh, once we decide that the female will be bred, <coughs> we'll put her vaccination up to date uh, because you know the season is here. So we, we have the records of, the, of their seasons. So when the season, the cycle is almost there, we'll vaccinate the female. The bitch will be vaccinated. Uh, and then we'll do the deworming in time before mating. So for the, for the female, we'll do the DHLP and the rabies vaccination. The annual vaccination, we'll do it just before the mating. And the deworming will also be done, keeping it up to date. So we'll also check on the mail that we are using we'll do them some research on it if it's from our kennels or if we are sourcing for the mail uh, the program for the vaccinations for the puppies immediately two weeks after bath we will deworm the, the beach and at that same time we'll deworm the puppies the puppies uh, vaccination program uh, deworming program will continue every two weeks until they are around uh, four months. We'll deworm them every two weeks. The number of tablets being used on the puppies will determine on the size and the weight. Because uh, on each, the tablets that we use, they advise you on how many tablets to use depending on the weight of the puppy. So we continue with that program. For the, for the vaccination, the first vaccination for the puppies will be done at around between five and six weeks. That will be first parvovirus. The second one will be done two weeks later. That will be second parvovirus. The third one will be done three weeks later. That will be DHLP again. DHLP mainly some people will refer to it as distemper. 
but inside it it also has the pavo the hepatitis and uh, uh, most importantly cleanliness of the puppies is key and then the food that we give them is uh, very crucial you have to be very careful on the food the quality of food that you're using and uh, that's mainly the vaccination program for the rabies we usually talk to the vet to advise us on when to vaccinate the rabies for the winning program we will start from around three and a half weeks four weeks just introducing the leaking part where you just introduce maybe some soup very so delicious soup introduce the puppy to know that there is food outside there away from the mom but uh, we also look at the quantity of of milk being produced the lactating beach because we also invest a lot in the kibbles that we use during the lactation period so we'll also look at the the, the female that we used how 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 much milk is she producing and uh, number of puppies also will determine if the litter is too big then we'll have to introduce the food a bit earlier because we are looking at the health of the female and the health of the puppies we also look at <coughs> each and every puppy we do the way we have a weighing scale we do a weekly basis to see the co the, the progress of the puppies and how much weight they are gaining if there is anyone that any one of them that is being left behind we take some precaution and maybe do some extra for it we have a program for pest control so we have different uh, various methods of controlling fleas and ticks uh, first we wash the dogs regularly uh, I would tell you they love the shower because we do it very gently we introduce them uh, from the puppy stage and if we get a dog that is an adult we will do it smoothly we have uh, every dog will have a bath for two days in, in a week so they are twice a week we'll have them to be washed and then in, after every three months uh, we'll use the flea control <coughs> methods such as the uh, sportons we have the tablets once a month and then it will do the magic for you but we also do the cleaning regularly the kennels we wash with the uh, flea flea we, we wash with the medicine that uh, does away with the fleas yeah, the kennels are very clean. We also do the, the pallets are done regularly and we put them in the sun, make sure we have sprayed them uh, and that works for us. So it's not quite a challenge because we have managed to do it for quite some time and we haven't had challenges with the fleas and the ticks. We haven't lost any dogs uh, to fleas or ticks. Uh, and we also, when, once the dogs, goes for a, the dogs go for a walk, when they're back here, we have to take some measures to clean them up, check them, and uh, that has worked for us. But flea control measures, we put uh, key some investment into it. At Shujaki Nine Masters, we also do, apart from breeding, we also do training for clients. Uh, a client may come and buy a puppy from us or bring an adult dog or a puppy to us for training. And that will depend, uh, mainly will be dependent on what the client wants. I wouldn't decide, but I will advise. Or, or, or I'll look at the puppy. We first do an assessment of the dog, and that's when we'll decide uh, capabilities of the dog, maybe. And the client will also tell you the intended purpose of the dog. So mainly every dog must undergo obedience training, basic and maybe advanced. Some clients will just want an obedient dog. Some, for security purposes, will, uh, will want them trained on protection. We don't really call it aggression. We call them protection because it has to be controlled. We will put measures to control them. So we'll condition the dog into what we want it to be, depending on the client requirements and our assessment. That will go a long way in advising us what to do. So mainly, obedience is key, but if the client wants, we'll go an extra mile into protection training, advanced protection, and more of such. Our dogs are just trained on basic obedience and play. And uh, some of them are trained on protection, and uh, some of them are trained on advanced protection. Uh, we'll just talk about the challenges as a by the way, because we, at Shujaki Nine Masters, positively caring and daring, we try to avoid looking at the challenges but come up with solutions to the ups and downs that we face every day. So, mainly. 
Okay, we'd say the quality of the dogs we breed are top notch, so we haven't had challenges in the quality of dogs. Our finances, uh, most breeders won't tell you the truth, but dog breeding is kind of draining financially. So you have to be really, really properly uh, organized to manage dog breeding, to keep your dogs healthy, to keep them in good conditions. You have to invest in the feeding program. You have to invest in the vaccination program, which also doesn't come at a low cost. You have to invest in the flea control measures. You have to invest your time. So most people will just think dog breeding, you just take the dogs, keep them in the kennel. That is the wrong way to do it. So you also mainly you have to invest your time into it and it's passion. Let's say it's not about the money, but more of the passion that we do. It will take a lot of <coughs> yourself into it. So mainly what some of the challenges is maybe you'll breed some dogs and people are not financially stable. Like the current economy, so you can pull. the dogs will still need to be taken care of even the puppies the numbers might be high and they'll be marketing you need time to market you need to invest in the marketing strategies you'll have to dog breeding is more if you take it as a business then you'll come up with solutions. Before you in, indulge into it, you'll have to understand what you're going into. So you'll have prepared for some of the things. So, so most of the challenges we had prepared for them, some of them just come up on, in the way. But so far we, had, we have dealt with them in the right way and we are proud of how we are dealing with them. So mainly I think the immunity of dogs is not very, very good. Uh, they fall they fall to diseases very fast, so you have to be very careful. Check on the dogs regularly. Understand what is going on with your dogs. Take time to check on your dog physically. Each dog, one by one, take your time. Because uh, a dog might be okay in the morning, and in the evening things have changed. So you have to understand. You have to be a vet, I, I, in quotes. You have to understand what is happening. You have to understand what is happening with your dogs. Have to understand what changes to expect. What changes, maybe if your dog doesn't eat, try to understand, is it the feeding program? Is it something that has changed in your kennel? What has changed? What has made the dog not eat for that day? Then you have to maybe have an isolation center. We also have challenges of uh, the outbreaks of diseases, such as the parvovirus. You have to understand the challenges of the vaccinations uh, that you should do every vaccination on time because we have the outbreaks, uh, the stemper outbreak, rabies outbreak, parvo outbreak. So you have to be very careful and understand what you're going into and the precautionary measures. So for us, we have set lots of precautionary measures. Uh, the food that we feed our dogs, we ensure... <coughs> We ensure cleanliness in the kennel and uh, we take all the measures. So the challenges, we are facing them head on. Now, none of the challenges so far has been able to bring us down. So we are facing them and I think we are getting somewhere. We are trying to understand uh, evolution in the business. We try to understand the clientele needs. And uh, so far we have met very supportive clients and we also do follow-ups with our dogs. Once we rehome our dogs, we do follow-ups with where we do follow-ups for where they go. We try to support their clients in the challenges that they face, and I think that has helped as a big uh, part in our breeding. Uh, we understand the challenges that they face. Uh, maybe if there's something we were looking for in our breedings and it didn't turn up, so we we try to work with our with our veterinaries, with our financial advisors. <coughs> Uh, and it has worked for us for, for, for the better. So we have uh, had an improvement every, every year. We have had an improvement in all that we have invested on. We have also invested in the financial advisors. We have invested in the food, the veterinaries, and everyone that is coming through. We are really appreciate you at Shuja K9 Masters. We also invest in the training uh, of our dogs, keeping them physically fit, and more of that. So for breeding, we only breed once in a year 
and sometimes we take our time. We look at the health of the of the dog before we breed them. What are we looking for? For us, it's not just breeding. We're looking more into quality. So we have lots of factors that we consider before breeding, but none of our dogs is bred twice a year. We only breed once. That's why we have invested more in the females. And uh, we also might plan to breed the dog and when the time is right we find that the male we're looking for is not available or is not of the quality or is not bringing in or is not bringing in what we are looking for uh from the puppies so we might skip but we only breed once that is if it has to be bred we mainly don't focus on the number of breedings but the quality of the breeding that comes from shuja k9 masters for ourselves, we have uh, invested in the females that we have, the males that we have, uh, we believe are top quality. And the puppies that we're giving to our new dog owners and new dog lovers have to be quality too. So we really don't look at the number of breedings. For as I told you, we're doing it for passion, not for the money. Yeah. Uh, Shujaki Nine Masters as, uh, as a brand. Eh? First, I'll tell you Shuja was our old man, that was his name, he was a freedom fighter and that is where we got the name from. And uh, to him I think it will be a legacy if we are, or we are a success. Mainly we are focusing on quality, quality and quality. Uh, we are looking at reaching the whole of Africa, the whole of uh, the world. We can export quality breeds, import quality breeds from there. So we can be sure we are doing, we are going the right way. We are always out there to hold hands with our fellow breeders, fellow dog lovers, fellow dog owners. Uh, we are out there doing our research. So we are looking to get out there with quality, understanding, giving the dogs better homes. That is way, 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 way one of our most, <coughs> one of the points that we focus on the most. When you come to get a Belgian Malinois, just tell us the purpose of the dog. Are you willing to invest in the training? Are you willing to invest in the, your time in it? Don't get a Belgian Malinois from us, then later tell us the dog is a destructive one, you know, and yet you went and locked the dog in a kennel all its life. So we really talk, uh, talk, talk to our clients and poten potential clients. We really advise them. And we believe we are working to bring different things into the dog world, but mainly give the dogs the, a better life and uh, get people out there to understand that dogs bring a lot into our lives. Positive, positive and positive. For our fellow dog breeders, uh, this is not business. It's a passion. So I'll tell you, invest your money in the right way uh, in, uh, give the dogs a good life don't just take a dog uh, breed it and then you keep it away you sold the puppies you have the money with you now you're done with it invest in quality invest in their health uh, as a client coming to get a dog from you, I'd really, really look at the health of your dogs, the cleanliness of the kennels. Uh, the cleanliness of the kennels, the food that you're feeding them, will really go away in supporting you, the, cell, uh, the rehoming of your puppies. It will also go, go a long way in giving a good picture of your kennels and giving a good picture of the dogs that you keep. Once the dogs are happy, you uh, just yourself will be proud of what you're doing. Uh, once you're into dog breeding, dog breeding is just like any other business. Uh, maybe let's call it farming. You need financial advisors. Don't think you know everything. You need to learn. Be open to new uh, adventures out there. Understand the market trends. Understand what you're keeping and have a lot of information about the dogs that you're keeping. Uh, understand the breed. Don't just sell the dog because a client wants the dog and it will bring money into your pockets. Understand why you're selling it if the client is ready to handle such a dog. Uh, you can come to us and uh, we'll have a Belgian Malinois puppy. You will love the puppy, but we'll tell you this is the characteristic of the puppy. I, uh, and from what you told me about yourself, you cannot handle the dog. So we prefer this dog should go into a working condition like the conservancies. So we are really t we, t we try to understand what we are bringing out there, and uh, that will help help you a lot. Uh, 
every dog lover believes they have the best dog and none of them is wrong so we know the loyalty the love that dog dogs bring into our lives and uh, i think for a dog lover the fact that i just called you a dog lover you understand what you're getting into you understand what you have in the table give your dogs time and you'll re they'll reciprocate don't just feed the dog and say you're a dog lover give them your time that is all they need just a few minutes and uh, i'd advise every dog lover take a few minutes to do some training for your puppy for your big dog give them a play session give them walks it's healthy for them try and understand how your dog is living keep them clean i'll just repeat just like for the dog breeders invest in your dog invest and it will reciprocate not financially but let's say emotionally if you're broken and uh, i think also dogs can be personally trained into more of guide dogs or service dogs that will help you in a, in a big way so for our dogs we also do a lot of socialization for them first we invest in human dog socialization where we take the dogs from for walks out there slowly I, from when they are puppies uh, then we introduce mainly we focus on uh, we focus on uh, children we mainly invest in people dog socialization on children we'll bring the children to play with the puppies for the big dogs we also try to understand that not every dog will blend in with every person so we don't force the dogs into things we try to understand our dogs but we mainly focus on the dog human socialization aspect of walks where we co we do some corrections uh, when the dog uh, shows aggression towards humans or children and even livestock we try to correct them and show them that is not the way we do positive reinforcement for that like we'll have a treat with us when we are doing the walk uh, when we have the when we are walking the dog and it shows some aggression towards humans children or livestock we'll show it no we take the we'll walk them like different direction give them a treat so they'll know there's something better than what i was trying to do then there is a socialization of the breeds mainly we have some challenges of maybe some male dogs won't get along and uh, maybe the fe a female is on its season and uh, at that time we have to understand every dog when uh, we won't <coughs> just bring males together yet there is a female on season They'll, dogs are from the wolf family they'll try to prove who's the man of the house so we are try to understand mainly we focus on socializing females and females males and females <coughs> for males adults we really do put them together because once we have a female on heat uh, we'll have a challenge and uh, we try to avoid fights as possible in our kennels so we socialize them according to understanding of our kennel but when a client comes and we can do a socialization for them depending on what they want with their dog to understand out there quality 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 here we just focus on good quality giving dogs a happy life feeding them let them feed and enjoy what enjoy their life that is why we keep them to be happy and uh, they always reciprocate so we currently have very top quality registered uh, caucasian of our chakas puppies uh, at around four months uh, we also have uh, the same four months belgian pure belgian malino we mainly focus on uh, pure breeding pure dog breeding uh, from our location in Tawala you can also reach us through 0727-950-982 plus 254 Kenya 0727-950-982 Shujaki 9 Masters on Facebook on the other social media handles you'll reach me through Kevin Mwangi Kevo Mwas the first Instagram yeah, but mainly I prefer use of the number, but you can reach me through WhatsApp, yeah, 0727 Let me introduce you to some of our far babies at Shuja K9 Masters. This is Aza, one of our boys, a very good boy. Uh, he's our breeding, uh, and we are proud of him. Her high ball drive, trained on, tra trained on basic protection and uh, basic obedience this is shani one of our breedings she's on our she's in our breeding program and this is lita outsourced female we just got her also in our breeding program never bred before
great Belgian Malino, very promising, and we're sure we're improving the quality of our kennel. Yeah, this is Nia, one of our founders of Shuja K9 Masters. Come near, near up. Come near. This is Jata, also a Belgian Malinois, super high drive, bred, uh, bred uh, outside, but we brought her here. And she's, her quality is great, top. And we are proud of her. She currently has puppies at our kennel. And uh, we are sure she's bringing quality and high drive, high energy levels. And we are proud of her. Here, come. Come here. Nadia, come. This is Nadia. She's uh, around six years, seven years, and we are proud of her. Got her at an advanced age, and her breedings have been awesome. We have a puppy from her for the last breeding, and we are proud of what she's done at our. We are very proud of what she's doing at our kennel, and uh, great. This is Nyota. Tricky, tricky. Who you wanna penda kuuma? Who you? No, no. Yeah, she's ready to bite me. Yeah, she, we, are, we are proud of her, a great Belgian Malinois. Yeah, Poppy, 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 come. Come, Poppy. Good, Poppy. Yeah, this is Poppy. Uh, once we got a breeding of a Belgian Malinois and a shepherd that had visited, and we are happy she's here. We just keep her as our own protection dog and a personal dog. Yes. Up, Puto. Up. Stay. No. This is Pluto, one of our Belgian Malinois males, available for stud services. And uh, he's promising and also good. We've had him for quite some time. Well trained on uh, advanced obedience, advanced protection. Platz, Pluto. Platz. Come, come, Pluto. Zitz. Platz. Zitz. Up. Up, Pluto. Good boy. So we are proud of him and what he's becoming of him. Yeah, we've had him and we are happy. He's a very good and uh, imp promising boy. Hi, Zuri. Come, Zuri. Come, Zuri. Ah, ah Pluto, stop. Hi, Zuri. Come, Zuri. Come. This is Zuri, one of our, our, our Caucasian of our Chaka babies. And uh, she has puppies currently. She's laid back when she needs to be. Uh, very controlled, to, uh, great temperament. Uh, the fleas are really taking a toll on her. The flies, sorry. The flies are taking a toll on her. She's not very friendly with flies. But we are proud of her. Yeah. Here we come. Zuri. Zuri. Yeah, this is her. These are Zuri's puppies. Registered with the East African Kennel Club. Yeah, we are currently four months. Headed to five months. Available for rehoming. And uh, they're, they're doing great, they're doing great. These are Belgian Malinois puppies, uh, available for rehoming also. They're around four months, heading to five months. And we're happy for what we produced, top quality. They're, both parents are available at our kennel. You are welcome to visit and see them and uh, have a taste of their temperament and their quality that we have. Hi, Tugi. This is Tugi, one of our breedings. Zuri is the mom. He's available for stud services. Uh, just around 15, 16 months. And we're proud of him. Uh, still promising. Uh, development is still ongoing. The bone structure is very promising. And uh, we are happy to have him in our kennel. Tugi, come. Sit. Tugi, sit. Good boy. You're a good boy, Tugi. Yeah. Tools of trade. Here are our tools of trade. So normally for the walks, we have the collars. We have the normal collars. Uh, we have the balls, uh, one of our training tools. We use the positive reinforcement mainly. Uh, that is, uh, we use the balls and uh, food, the treats. Uh, and... Uh, 
mainly that's the most main mainly the exercise we do for socialization and uh, basic obedience training we have the tools of training here uh, the ball is what they love the most we have different types of balls some of them we use them to hide the treats and uh, test their nose power how 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 much they go into detection maybe just a uh, basic play and uh, that's for them yeah this is what happens when you leave a belgian malino with a toy and it's unmanned so we say a toy is just for playing and then you take it away so that it the give the reward can also have a meaning you cannot have a reward me with something that i can have any time that i want so yeah and these are some of the toys here this is a harness mainly used to take the dogs for a walk when we want them to be free. A harness will um, allow the dog to use its full power during the walk. So if you know your dog will leash pull, that's when you put a harness. Stress-free, it is using its chest and front feet to pull you. So that is when you use the harness. There are different types of harnesses. And uh, this is a Martin Gale collar. Just uh, very, very, very uh, maybe we could call it a balanced correction tool. Uh, doesn't hurt the dog at all and uh, it's good for uh, to have it at your kennel and uh, the harnesses uh, the military type are available at our kennels so once you want to do the take your dogs for the walks you will find them available you can contact us yeah this is a military uh, uh, leash which will stretch so you have to under you have to understand how to use it it will usually stretch when the dog is pulling the leash will stretch this time to appreciate our main sponsor for this episode, Mr. Christopher Gadambo. If you also want to sponsor Dog TV Kenya to more dog lovers, to for more information to get out there, to reach more people, kindly contact Dog TV Kenya in the contacts below. Thanks for watching. We very appreciate much of your time from the start to the end. You're welcome to Shujaki Nine Masters. Uh, Subscribe, like, share. This is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary TV show.